Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to dye your hair at home if you're like me and you have a tiny gray patch that you need to take care of, but you don't want to go to the salon, you don't want to waste your money on a whole box at home kit, you just want to do it quickly with a hair dye you can get at like a beauty supply store. So let's get started. First we need to mix up our chemicals, so I'll show you quickly how to do that. So the products that I've got here today include the Wella hair dye itself and that comes in either a like tube gel form or a liquid in a bottle form, some cream developer, a scale so I can measure everything out, a bowl for mixing, a brush for mixing and applying to the hair, and then some post, con uh, post color conditioner, some gloves, and of course a hair clip if we need a hair clip. So the dye comes either in this tube form where it's like a gel or it comes in a liquid glass form and I happen to have both in the color that I'll be using today. To pick my color I just sort of went based on experience and on well as color charts. There's the color and the color I'm using for sort of my I would say kind of medium brown hair is 3A Dark Ash Brown. And I'm gonna be using the liquid today just because that's what I already have open. So for mixing, I'm just gonna be using a kitchen scale to measure out my measurements so I'm not wasting any product. And according to the box instructions for this product, we mix one part of the Color Charm Liquid with two parts of Developer. So I will go ahead and do that. Because my patch is so tiny, I'm literally going to use a tiny little bit of dye. First, maybe I'll give this a shake. So that is 0.1 ounces, so again, just a tiny, tiny amount. And then I'm going to get up to 0.3 with the rest of the developer. So once you have that in your bowl, you can literally just go ahead and mix it up. And there's your tiny hair patch amount of dye ready to go. <clears throat> Next, I'm gonna just throw on my gloves. My chemicals are all mixed and ready to go. Because it's an ashy brown shade I've chosen, the dye is sort of turned into a deep purple color. And you can see the most gray area of my hair is just kind of right up in this crown section. So that's where I'm gonna start. I'm not gonna apply dye all over my head, just kind of in this area. Um, just and So basically here, and also a little bit on either side of it. And so I'm going to actually grab my comb and start a little bit more central to that dye, to that uh, gray patch. It's a little tricky to do when I'm filming, so. Pardon me, I'm looking backwards as I'm filming all this. So I'm just gonna take my brush. So I'm just gonna take my brush and literally just dab it on the roots and get it as good as I can. Okay, and once I've done that, I don't need to go any farther this direction, so I'm just gonna start heading back the other direction. Just in tiny sections, sort of close to that part. There we go. If I'm doing a whole head dye, I will sometimes take off my glasses. But for these um, little touch-ups, you really don't need to. And just kind of blend everything else around it. Okay, 
The best thing about doing it yourself like this is it's just so economical to going to a salon if they even do that kind of service for you. Where it's mixing up dye for just a small patch. And I'm just going to sort of brush through and make sure I go back to my really gray area and make sure everything's nice and saturated because even though I mix up just the tiniest amount, I do have some leftover. So why not go ahead and use that up? So I added 0.1 ounces of the develop color and then 0.2 ounces of the developer and I still have a ton of extra dye. So actually now what I'm gonna do is just sort of clip everything back using my hair clip. And because I do sometimes get grays around the temples, I'm just gonna do everything front to back with just a really light coat of dye. I'm hardly even applying anything. And then once I'm done brushing it through, I just kind of wisp it all back so it blends nicely. Oops. If it gets on your skin, just don't worry about it. Just wash it off with the washcloth or something before you go. Applied it everywhere I need it to be. Now the final step is I'm just gonna put on a shower cap just over where there's been dye. And I'm just gonna let that set for 30 minutes. So after 30 minutes, I'm going to run to the shower, wash it off. I'm gonna apply some post um, dye conditioner and the one that I have is just the one that I bought at Sally. At the same time, I picked up my dye, which is the After Color Sealer from Ion. I'm not super crazy about these Ion deep conditioning packets, but they always have them on sale. And I feel like using some sort of color sealer, whether it works or not, it just feels better after you dye your hair. So that is what I usually do. And I will see you after I'm all done and blow dried. Bye-bye. So while we're waiting, why not do a face mask? I have one of the Life brand micro debrasion masks that I'm just gonna apply. It's a two part mask. So first of all, we just apply step one, which is like an exfoliating mask. Once we rub it in for a couple minutes, it says two on the package. We just let it sit for the rest of the time. So I let mine sit for 15, 20 minutes. Then we can move on to step two and we just apply this lotion once we've rinsed. So at this point I have rinsed off all the hair dye, done my deep conditioner, and I'm just moisturizing my face. This face mask gives you a ton, a ton of moisturizer. It's almost too much so I had a hard time rubbing it all in. But eventually we got there and we are ready to move on to blow drying. So once I'm done with that, I will join you in a second. Bye. All right, guys. So my hair dyeing is all done. I blow it or dry. My roots are maybe still a little bit damp, but the rest of it is nice and dry. And yeah, it looks good. Super cheap to do. I can't even calculate how cheap it is to do at home, you guys. It's like 
maybe eight bucks for the big developer bottle, which will last for years and years, and maybe five or six dollars for either the tube or the cream. And again, they last for multiple, multiple applications just because we're using such a tiny amount each time we apply it. Um, I'll just show you my grays here, which I brought is it. And yeah, you can't see anything. It looks good. It blends in really nicely with the rest of my hair, which is weird because like I said, um, my hair is, I wouldn't consider it dark ash brown, but um, don't forget the hair dyes, hair dyes do lighten up over time and just kind of experiment and find what works with best for you. I would say don't start too dark, um, but if you do have like a dark brown, um, it can be really hard to match that and what you see in store isn't necessarily what you see when it's out on your head. Um, so yeah, everything else is my natural cover. Just this one patch right here is where I do my gray touch-ups when I need them. Thank you for joining me on my hair dyeing adventure and I hope this could help you in some way. I will leave down below in the description box a list of information of all the products that I used, where I got my products, and some other like color charts that can maybe help you pick out what color would work best for your hair. Please don't forget to subscribe, give me a like if you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful. And if you want any other beauty, makeup, fashion sort of tips, just keep watching my channel. Bye guys, see you later.